Okay, so welcome to Learning Together. Of course, this is a, uh, a program where we like to showcase all of the creative and uh, ingenious solutions that a lot of our teachers are coming up with as we uh, try to continue with learning while our schools are closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Joining me today is uh, Kristen Schramm, who is a grade one teacher out at St. Louis uh, Catholic Elementary School in Leamington. She's on the line with us today. So uh, thanks for joining us, uh, Kristen. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for asking. Okay, a little bit of a lag there. I'm finding on the on the uh, on the uh, on the on the timing here, but that's okay. That's just one of the uh, one of the joys of working with technology in an online world. Um, so I guess uh, you know one of the things that we're trying to get a handle from from you, Kristen, as a as a grade one teacher, you know, it's a little bit more challenging, obviously, with some of the the younger students um, when it comes to you know trying to keep them motivated and, and, and keep them engaged with their learning. Can you tell me just in sort of a, a general sense how it is that you've managed to um, kind of replicate as best as you can your your, your classroom in a, in a virtual environment? Um, it's definitely been a challenge. It being turned into a virtual platform um, has been a huge learning curve, not just for me, um, but for my parents and for my kids as well. We have done a really great job of having open communication. We communicate through Remind. Um, I've set up a little chat for all of the kids so the parents can message me there too. And we have constant, constant communication. I know that we're to set like boundaries and timelines, but we're kind of in an unprecedented time. And I have parents that work till like eight or nine o'clock at night. I'm not going to have my office hours until three when the school day ends. So parents are welcome to like message whenever they need to, and I will help whenever I need to. Um, as for our classroom, I've tried to give my kids as much um, stability as I can. And I've given them some of the things that we used in our classroom just to maintain some of that routine. So at home, they have their word study book, they have their journal, they have their dictionary, they have a whiteboard and a marker, they have their 100 chart. Um, and I think that that's kind of given them a sense of control back because they know what those materials mean and they feel comfortable with it. And it gives them a little bit of independence because they don't need their parents to do their journal. They know what to do. They don't need their parents to do their word study. They know what to do. So that kind of lets them show off almost to their parents what they're able to do. And it gives the parents a little bit of a break that the kids are doing something independent. So I found that that has helped um, a great deal just to have some of the tools that we had in our classroom, um, like given to them so we can maintain that routine. Yeah, that whole, you mentioned the word independent. I mean, that's kind of really a key word in there, isn't it? Uh, you, I mean, you, you just sort of assume that the kids at that age require a great deal of, of supervision, but I guess sort of a, almost kind of a fortuitous outcome of this whole situation is maybe that the kids are through this are, are, are learning to become a little bit more independent in their learning. I hope so. Like these are things that we've done since September and I noticed a difference in the amount of kids that participate once those materials arrived to them um, because they know what to do with them and there's no there's no guessing. We still do have things that we do online, but just to have that paper pencil that they're familiar with, um, I think definitely helps. They're just they're just little. Not everything can be done online. Mm -hmm. So to have that paper pencil for them and that routine has definitely made a big a huge difference. Sure, sure. So you had a couple of... Uh, and couple when they have work that needs to be submitted, like I'd like to have... Could you repeat that one more time? Yeah, I was just going to say, so, you, so you, you had a couple of tools that um, that you were using, uh, and I was uh, going to ask you if you could just sort of showcase some of those things, if you wouldn't mind sharing your screen and maybe going over a couple of tools that you that you like to use online for your, for your sure. students. So I'm sure that the things that I'm using are things that... Um, a lot of other teachers are using as well. But I think the big part is, is the, what's this? I think a big part of this is how much technology 
um, knowledge I had before this, which would rhyme with hero. There was absolutely zero technology um, like skills that I had. So to be able to even work on this platform and to provide these things for my students, it's been a huge learning curve, but it's been nice to share it with, with my classroom family. So one of the things that we use, and I know a lot of teachers do use it already, is the RASKIS, which is the leveled online learning. So you would take the benchmark of your students that you would have already done in class, and you can input Put that level into this website and then the kids are given books that are at their level so it's kind of like your take-home reading program but it would be online um, so I've already entered all of their benchmarks in here I'll give you like a really quick overview without giving too much information but sure. as the teacher you are able to see your student activity so you're able to see how many times the kids have logged in um, how long they have read for, the books that they've read, have they listened to them, have they read them, and how many quizzes they've completed. You can um, click on an individual student and it will show you exactly the books that they have read. And if they listened to the book, um, if they read the book independently, and it will show you their quiz scores. And the quiz scores would be almost like guided reading when you kind of just go through those questions with them to check for comprehension. It'll tell you their score and how they did. If they did not um, get five out of five or six out of six on one of their quizzes, it will tell you what they were lacking like what they got stuck on. Perhaps it was vocabulary, perhaps it was inferencing. And so the, it's giving you the same tools that you would make note of when you're doing your guided reading with the students. Wow, so I think cool. this friend here, yep. Um, it gives you that little bit of information. It gives you that little bit of information where they um, made their errors on their quiz. So it does give you a pretty accurate picture of what they're doing at home and in their reading. Um, it will give you, that's under the student activity. And then you could go to the skills and it just further breaks down um all the different skills so like cause and effect author's purpose compare and contrast if they could tell if it was fact or fiction you know um, fiction or nonfiction. um making inferences drawing conclusions which is a big one and then it breaks down individually how they did on each book so a huge amount of information that's given and then there's assignments. So the kids can go in and just read for fun if they go into the reading room. All of the books in their reading room are at their level and they can just go in, read, have fun. And you still, as a teacher, get all of the information, but you can also send them to level up. And level up is that they have to read a certain amount of books and answer a certain amount of questions. And then they can go to the next level. So if you had a friend that started at a level C and they met all the requirements for level C, then they get bumped up to a level D. And I actually had one little friend, his mom messaged me yesterday to say that it was a huge celebration at their house that he moved up um, a level. So we are going to schedule a call and he is going to read to me on a little one-on-one -on -one conference so he can kind of show off that new great reading. So that's always exciting. Um, so the RAS kids, huge amount of information that you can gather. The account is super, super easy to um, create. And there's even um, an option when the parents go on with their kids that the parents can get these same reports that I'm getting. So parents can register for this. They would do it through their uh, student's account. So it's been, it's been great. Wow, that's terrific. That's and great. then if kids have not been reading, I know. So yeah, I can send a little message. Oh, like, do you have a problem logging on? You know, what can I help you with? What kind of books are you interested in? Because you can see how many times they've, how many time they've logged in. So this one, um, it's like effortless and it's part of our, it's part of our day. So as part of our, um, you know, syllabus for the week, I ask them to do their RAS kids for at least 20 minutes, 20 minutes a day like they would in class, like if we were doing our independent reading. So it falls right into place with that.
Terrific. Okay. Um, another one of the uh, programs that I'm using. Is that okay if I go right to yeah. the Khan right, Academy yeah. one? Yeah, please go ahead with that, yep. Okay, so another one that we've been using is Khan Academy. And to be honest, I didn't really know that it was available to primary students. When I was teaching grade seven and grade eight, I used Khan Academy myself to kind of get refreshed on some of um, the formulas and whatnot. So I would be able to teach the math the next day. And then it was a parent in my class that said, oh, we've been using it at home. So I investigated it and it, it's perfect for us. So again, the Khan Academy, you would have your student sign up or you could sign up for them. And once they are signed up into your class, you again get a recording of all of their assignments, all of the work that they've done. It tells you when you've completed it. So to start off, we um, were doing uh, place value to start off for um, our at-home learning. So I went in and I found um, the whole unit on place value, which offered videos. Um, it offered practice lessons. Um, the practice lessons were really great because if one of the students answered the question incorrectly, um, it would direct you to fix it. So it would show you another short video. It would give you another explanation at the bottom. So it was like a little built-in teacher if they got something wrong. So they couldn't really go on to the next question until they fixed it. Um, and then you get a copy of that as the teacher that you um, see how they did on their first answer. They ended up getting it, but you would know if they struggled right at the beginning, which is, is telling. Um, so with that information, I was able to make like our small math groups and go over a couple of things. Um, no, that's not what I wanted. So here, just for an example, so I wanted, I sent out a video for the kids to watch and this will tell me the kids that watched it and when they, and when they watched it. So I know who was like taking part on it and I can do that with their assignments. So there was like a little exercise, a little bit of a quiz and I can check to see who completed it and how they did. So this is almost like a built-in mark book. Um, it tells you um, like how, how they did. You can check their report to see where the kids went wrong. So again, like a lot of um, built-in assessment and you don't really have to do anything except for assign the work. And then it's just up to the teacher to check that data and then make their small groups and um, go from there. So it'll give you the question that the kids had to answer and it'll tell you how the kids answered with each individual with each individual student. So you could see where their problems were. So this again is like a small group um, math that you would normally do like at your U-shaped table that the kids are doing online with their parents. So for somebody who's so that part have, uh, not has worked out uh, really well. We've also used the IXL website Sorry, I was just going to say for somebody who, who, who claims to have not, uh, you know, had a whole lot of uh, experience with technology, you've really kind of, it, it appears as though you've made a lot of progress here and you've, you've learned a lot yourself through, through all of this. I have, I have, and it's, it's exciting and it's exciting that I'm able to share it with my classroom family. We're all in this together. When we have messages back and forth, we all kind of end it like we got this, we're in this together. Um, so it's been as trying as it's been and as many tears as I've shed, um, it's all been worth it because it seems to be all coming together. I have my kids come on, they're engaged, they're doing the work, the parents are communicating. It's, it's all coming together. Now you um, there's been quite a few right. feedback from parents that just say how much. Sorry, I I was going to say you, you you did something last Friday night that was uh, that was a little unique and a little unusual. Can you tell us about that? We did. 
We did. So last Friday at seven o'clock, we held our first um, classroom family pajama party story time. So kids were able to come on at night. So it was like after school, they had their jammies on, they grabbed a stuffy, their siblings were allowed to come, their parents joined, families were curled up on the couch, some kids were curled up in their bed. And we just read um, some of our stories. So I had some of our books that are our classroom favorites from our um from school and we read two of those books on Friday. And I think my most um, favorite part was when the kids were mouthing the words of our classroom book. We read The Giving Tree all the time and just to see the kids mouth the words as I was reading to them, that just kind of like brought us back together. I needed to see them, I needed to do that, the kids needed to do that. Um, it was great. And then when our stories were done, the kids each had a chance to say what their best part of the week was. So it was a really nice way to end the week. And we're going to make it a, a weekly thing. And the kids are already like having a countdown, like when our story time is, when PJ time is. So that is definitely, um, you know, something different. And it is out of school hours, but the kids need it. And it really has given us back that sense of our classroom family. That's awesome. What a great idea. So can you try to can you try to give me a sense, Kristen, of, of some of the, the challenges that you may have had to deal with as, as you've been sort of working your way through this? I mean, other than the obvious one that you stated about kind of the learning curve that you had to go through and in terms of learning some of this technology. But what about what about some of the challenges that you faced and and, and maybe a little bit on, on how you've kind of gotten around some of those challenges by, by either by using technology or, or you know, whatever you may have done to, to kind of create this virtual classroom environment. Um, I can already see a difference in the way that our weeks are presented from what I presented our first week to what we've grown to on our third week. There by no means have we reached our max on what we're able to do, but I'm trying to learn something new each week and present that to my class. And I'm trying to keep it simple. If it takes me forever to figure something out, I don't want to stress my kids out. I don't want to stress my parents out about saving, importing and all of that, we're just trying to streamline it and, and keep it simple. Um, technology, like just, you know, from our meeting, the cutting in and cutting out. Um, some friends can log on, some can't. Uh, we have to redo some meetings. So just like little glitches, but I wouldn't say anything, anything major. The school has been wonderful, like giving the kids that needed a boost with technology. So everybody has the device, everybody has the internet that they need. Um, and I haven't had one student that has not participated. Um, they don't all participate at the same time, nor do I ask them to. Everybody's family is different at this time, and we're really respectful of that. I don't expect them to sit down for one full hour every day and do schoolwork. Some do because it works out. Others break it up throughout the day. I see them come on in the morning. They answer our question of the day, and then I see them come on back at night to do some other work, and like that's that's okay. And the way that we set up our classroom, I just give them work for the week, and they do it at their own pace. Some kids will finish it all on Monday and then just do practice activities for the rest of the week, and then some kids need that whole week to get through it. So I'm leaving it up to the kids and I'm leaving it up to their parents and they're all coming, they're all coming through. So I think having that flexibility is definitely, definitely a plus. That's great. So I mean, it's wonderful to hear that you're getting 100% participation rates with your, with your class. Um, what, what kind of feedback have you been getting from, from the parents? Um, there's been a lot of positive feedback. A lot of the parents are enjoying being able to see where their kids are at, that they're getting like a really good picture of what their day at school would look like. Quite a few parents have said, I don't know how you do this all day. Um, so it's nice that they're reaching out saying that there is a little bit of a challenge. And then that to me indicates, oh, well, like maybe we could set up a one-to-one -one and I could go over some of the things that they're getting stuck on. So just to have that open conversation with the parents has been great. Um, they will sometimes come on when we're having a conference, you know, can so-and-so stay on a little bit longer? We were having a little bit of trouble with this or they'll send a message. But I think the whole key to this is the open communication with, with your parents. 
and for them to feel comfortable to say, you know what, this isn't working, this we're not getting it. Um, and for them to say that they need need a boost. And my families have been really great about that. So the final question, and, you, and you're, you've kind of addressed that, but uh, you know, what, what kind of advice would you give to, to parents? To, what kind of advice do you give to your parents in terms of trying to manage the workload? And what kind of advice would you give to, to other teachers, to other parents out there who are you know, trying to navigate their way through these, these kinds of issues? To the parents, just to keep doing what what they're doing, to be in contact with your teacher. Um, your teacher is here to help. You're all in this together. You are a classroom family, whether you're all in one building or you're separate at your own homes. You are still a classroom family for the rest of this year, and we are here just to, to help each other, so to keep up with that communication. This is not meant to cause any of the kids' tears to be frustrated or upset, and if that happens, then you need to reach out and say, you know what, this isn't this isn't working. I need a boost on this. Um, so there has to be that level of honesty. Um, and I tell my kids all the time, if you're not getting something, I'm not going to know unless you tell me. And so they've been really good about that too. Um, having the whiteboards, I know that there's that online whiteboard, but I don't know how to use that yet. Um, so my kids are actually using physical whiteboards. So when we have our meetings, I get immediate feedback on who's getting it and who's not. And just having that whiteboard, the tool that they were used to using every day in the classroom, you can just see like that little bit of resistance wall come down to this. Like they're familiar with this. They can work through this. They know that if they write it on the whiteboard, if it's a mistake, they erase it right away. And only I can only I can see it. So they're still building their math confidence like we did in like we did in class using the whiteboards. There's been a huge difference um, just having that that tool. Um, and for other teachers, I think when some of the staff that I've worked with sees that I'm doing this series or doing this panel um, will be a huge surprise because I am not the person that anybody comes to with technical questions or looking for technical advice of, of any kind. They'll just keep on walking by. So if anything, um, if I can figure this out, anyone can figure this out there's been like tears there's been frustration there's been like getting my own kids involved in this but it's definitely doable and we're not alone um my staff and i'm sure all staffs have been great supporting one another um and you just have to rely on it and be honest as well that you need a boost i'm not getting this can someone can someone help so just that honesty and that open communication well, listen, uh, Kristen, it sounds like you're doing a great job out there in Leamington. Keep up the terrific work. Uh, it, it sounds like your students are, are, are really being well served by, by your efforts. So so good on you. Um, terrific job. And, and again, thanks so much for being here and, and, and telling us about your experience today. Oh, thank you for asking me. It was nice to be asked. Um, so you're invited to pajama party Thursday night, 7 p.m. Wear your best PJs. Bring your stuffy. It's a good time. It's the okay. event of the week. I'll, I'll definitely try to make it. All right. Thanks again for okay, coming. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.